What's up folks, my name is Gavin and that is my 2012 335 IS that's out of focus in the background there. But really more importantly, I'm gonna tell you guys whether it's actually a good daily driver or not. I think it's pretty good for the money. So, you're looking for a new daily, but you want something sporty, kind of GT car, but you don't want to spend more than 25K. Hell, if you could spend less than 20K, you'd be pretty happy about it. But let's face it, you want something that's a little bit nicer, more refined inside, but you also want it to be quick. It doesn't necessarily need to be brutally fast, but you want something quick. Well. In my opinion, there's very few options that fit the bill, like the 335iS. That's what I have, and I've had this car for about a year and a half now, and I've put, ooh, just under 30,000 miles on it in a year and a half, so I've got some time behind it. And here's what I can tell you. It's got a lot of strengths, it's got some weaknesses, but overall, it's a really tough package to beat. Let's talk about like everyday livability. It's an E92. So it's kind of the best of both worlds between being sporty, two door coupe, but also having some trunk space. And you know, if you really needed to put somebody in the back seat, you can. And this car does all of that really, really well. I'm a real estate agent and I'm, I live out of my car for the most part. I do most of my business sitting here in the driver's seat of my car, but at times I need to fit like a real estate sign, possibly even a real estate post uh, in the back of my car. And if I pull down the seats, guess what? I can fit it all in here with ease, which is pretty nice. Now, the other part of it is the ride. I'm on this, you know, relatively uh, curvy road and the pavement isn't great in certain sections. And I can tell you that the ride isn't too bumpy. It's not too choppy. The spring rate isn't too high. It's not a super, you know, uh, sporty, sharp car, but it's also still, you know, it's got some moves behind it. And I really like that. And part of the daily drivability in like, you know, uh, the, the strengths of this car is the motor, right? It's an N54 powered car. It's a, a dual, it's a twin turbo car before they went to a, a twin scroll turbo in the N55s. And so it's got a lot of grunt especially if you live somewhere with you know some altitude uh i live here in albuquerque new mexico and we're over a mile high and i know for a fact that this car is quicker than the bmw m3 with the 4.0 uh v8 so the e92 m3 at this elevation this car is a little bit more lively just because it's not always gasping for air and this car makes a ton of low end torque. And I really like that in traffic because there's times where you just need to get around somebody and instead of having to like grab the piss out of this thing, you just give it a little bit of throttle and it's gonna just get up and move. And I really like that about this car. That's probably my favorite thing about this car in general is, well, there's two things. First is gonna be the, uh, the motor. I really like this uh, twin turbo inline six. I know that there's a lot of questions about reliability with it, and I will make another video talking about what has broke, uh, you know, on this car because it's had a couple issues, but overall it hasn't been expensive stuff to fix. And um, it doesn't really take away from the ownership. It's all stuff that should have been done by the previous owner that didn't do it. And I'm totally okay with it. No big deal. Um, and the other part is the looks for the money. This is a sexy car. Like the lines of the E92 are long and sleek and graceful. When things are starting to get very much edgy and sharp on every single car that's being made uh, today. And this is an eight year old car, but it's also aged really, really well. And oftentimes people have no idea that this is an older car or the fact that I didn't pay 60 plus thousand dollars for it. I bought it a year and a half ago with extremely low miles and I paid $22,000, which at the time I thought was a great deal. And I still feel like I got a lot of car for the money. But now you can get a relatively, you know, mid, 
mid mileage to high mileage car for less than $20,000 in most cases. And at that price, I don't know what beats it. Now, here's the negatives. If you're looking for something that's extremely sharp and focused, like an E92 M3, a Boss 302, uh, maybe even like a, a, a Z06 VET, okay? Something that's truly fast and extremely driver focused, this may not be the car for you. And that's always been my issues with the cars. I really like this car most of the time. But there's also times where it's just not quite sharp enough. I own a 1994 uh, Mazda Miata, which is an incredibly visceral and just like sensory overload car, the way that I have it set up. And I love driving it because it's so incredibly engaging. And this car will never be that, okay? If you're looking for a car that's gonna be like a track car, this just isn't it. But it's got plenty of go, which I will show you right now. You put it in sport mode. This one has the seven speed DCT. While you won't see it, you can get a sense that the car is quick, you know? It bangs through gears. And before you know it, you're probably getting close to breaking the law. I won't tell you how fast that was because um, it's none of your business. But it is a quick car for everyday life and it's fun to drive and it's extremely refined in here. It's quiet, it's comfortable. I can spend hours in this car and anybody who's ever ridden in the car um, thinks it's nice. They think it's comfortable and they have no idea that I didn't spend all this money on this car, which is funny to me because it is built to the specs of like a, a 60, 70, plus thousand dollar car and nobody knows that it's basically a poor man's m4 look it up it is inline six turbo with a seven speed dct it's basically the predecessor to the m4 and it makes it a great drive without having all the crazy maintenance cost of an m car but it does depreciate like any other bmw so that's the beautiful thing about depreciation, especially on BMWs, is that you can get a really good deal on one of these. And if you haven't looked at them, you should check it out. Now, I'll be honest, I'm ready for something different and I'm probably gonna end up with a new car this year. But in the time that I've had it, I've had a great time with it and I've really enjoyed it. And I think if you're looking for something like this, okay, a, a, a sports car that's got some go, but is also refined, at a really good price. I think the 335IS is it. You can get a 335i, but ten, most of them tend to be pretty beat to hell. And if you want the N54 motor, you're gonna have to go for later iterations of the car. And if you want an N54 with a dual clutch gearbox, then you're really, there is nothing else. 335IS fam, it's the one. I'll make some more videos on the car. I know this one took forever to make because I got super distracted and honestly, I just, I don't know. I don't really have any excuses other than I got distracted doing other stuff, but I'll make a couple more videos on this car. I promise before I get something different, I'm thinking of a couple different cars that'll probably make people's heads spin considering um, they're not necessarily of the quality of this BMW, but hey, that's what cars are for, right? Drive them, love them, enjoy them, and then move on and get something different. If you like this, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me, what do you think my next car should be? I'm always looking for a bargain. I want specifically a performance bargain. And uh, I want something faster, much faster. Let me know what you think, fam. Have a good one. I'm out.